Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everybody. Hey, Eric, are you there? Eric. Can you unmute yourself, Eric? Yeah, you should be able to hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now. Hey, how's it going, Chick? Thanks for going. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I was my, having a little bit of uh, technological problems there. I'm glad I'm <laughs> glad it worked. <laughs> oh, there you are. I see yeah. you now. You were were you at the Kirtan the other night? Yeah, on Thursday night. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a special program going on tomorrow. There's this um, Swami from Eng England. He's probably a disciple, but he's he's like a really uh, charismatic, uh, very colorful personality. He, he does street uh, chanting. His name hmm. is Vishnu Swami. Oh, man. I got to work tomorrow night, but that sounds good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be live stream, so you can watch it later. But uh, this, this devotee, uh, Mahavishnu Swami, he goes around in Harinam and he he wears this really colorful outfit like he he plays an accordion but he he kind of drapes it so it's like kind of like a harmonium harmonium but he wears this really colorful outfit like with all kinds of doodads this huge hat with a, like Jagannath on it and all kinds of like he looks like a circus clown actually <laughs> and people love it cuz they just look at it as some kind of like an entertainment or 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 um you know some kind of oddity and and he'll chant Hare Krishna and the devotees are leading kirtan. He's leading with a microphone that's just like attached to his accordion, and uh, then he'll try to get people to chant. He he's really good at it. He'll just like shove a microphone in their face and and get them to <laughs> chant Hare Krishna. He's really good at it, and people like it because you know they just look at it as some kind of entertainment, you know, and it doesn't matter it, what they how they view it. It's it's perfect. Uh, you know, in that uh, if they chant Hare Krishna, then they're benefited or if they hear. But, uh, you know, he's pretty good at it. He was at the, uh, the Shringadev Festival in New Vrindavan last uh, mm -hmm. Saturday, the Shringadev Appearance Day. We had a program at our house actually too, because we, yeah. this is kind of an Shringadev Mandir. I kind of, I purchased my gurus on the Shringadev Murti. I have an Uger Nishringa, just like in New Vrindavan, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's actually, it's actually, it's got Harani Kashibu there permanently on his lap. You know, it's an Ugra Nishringa. It's a very fierce looking. I, it was the fiercest looking Nishringa Dave I'd ever seen in my life. I took a picture of it back in the 80s and I thought, oh my God, where is this deity now? And I was asking around and somebody told me, yeah, actually I have it. He's been sleeping for about, you know, a couple of decades, you know, since my <laughs> spiritual master left. But uh, he, he, uh, I, I purchased him for $500 and uh, now he's in my house. So he's protecting the house, you know, you know, like, right you know, you have, you ever seen those uh, ADT signs? It's like a blue stop sign. Yeah. So he, I kind of like, I made a stop, a sign like that, except instead of protected by or secured by uh, uh, ADT, I said secure by Nishringa Dave. And I have a picture of him ripping the guts out of uh, uh, Harani Kashipu and garlanding himself with it. And so it's kind of like a, a, a method of like, you know, even if they don't know who Nishringadev is, maybe the thieves will think twice about coming in and, and uh, lifting my flat screen TV, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if they see Nishringadev, because he's pretty fierce. But anyway, I mean, who needs guns when you got Nishringadev? You know, I, I don't believe in guns. Right but uh, you know, the string is sufficient for me. He protected Prahlad, so he can protect anybody. So are you are you able to read at all of the Sanskrit? Uh, I mean, you know, I can I can do what I can do. I can try, you know. OK, if you want to try, that's fine. And when Melissa, Melissa might jump in, too. Uh, and 
uh, I, I think um, Benjamin might jump on, but he's not going to read. He's just going to listen. But okay. Melissa doesn't read the Sanskrit very well, but uh, she she does read the English. I don't know when she's going to come on. She's she's working at her uh, boyfriend's um, video game store. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you have a video game store, but apparently, <laughs> I mean, everything's online nowadays, but uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, she's, she's working tonight, but she's going to like be broadcasting from there. She's going to be there tomorrow at the program. She's selected to do the Bhagavad Gita verse. You know, they, they do one every week. I, I don't know if you've noticed that they do a Bhagavad Gita verse every week. So okay. she's. Okay, Melissa is coming in online here. Speak of the devil. Melissa. Melissa. Is she there? Melissa, are you there? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. There you are. Oh, look at that. It's got, you've got all kinds of like Dungeons and Dragons stuff in the background there. <laughs> yeah, this is the used, uh, the used model room. And it, there's a whole other side here. You've got like all kinds of stuff that you, you sell from the, from the games, right? Yep. Yep. Live from the Fabricator's Forge. That's the, uh, the, is that a big dragon in the background there? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, my wife's really excited. She wants to watch that uh, Game of Thrones prequel. It's oh, called okay. House of Dragons. You know, she's not too obsessed with that. I mean, you know, everybody's seen that show, but uh, you know, a uh, it's like unless you've been living under a rock, you know what that is. You know, unless you you're a devotee, and then you probably don't know what it is, <laughs> which is fortunate. But uh, Eric's with us. You know, did you meet Eric? He was there last Thursday. Say hello, nice. Eric. Hey, nice to see you. Hey, Melissa. Good to meet you. Actually, I'm going to put uh, both of you on the screen here. Okay, there we go. All right. So um, I'm going to share the screen here. And Melissa, you can read. Eric is, is going to try to read. We can take turns. But, we, you know, you can do the Sanskrit if you want to try it, Eric. But I know that Melissa, you don't want to do the Sanskrit, so I can do it if it's my turn, or if Eric can do it, he can do it. Um, Benjamin might drop in too, but he's not going to read. He's just going to listen. I'm really excited that all of you could come. I was hoping that somebody would take the place of my old friend, Mike. But uh, so that's good. Okay, can you see the screen now? Okay, cool. All right, <clears throat> I'll, I'll start out. This is two verses put together. So, um, Melissa, you can read the translation and then uh, Eric, you can read the purport, the paragraph purport. We'll, we'll do a paragraph at a time here. Uh, text 18 and 19. Samasatro chamitre cha tata mana payamana nayo. Sitoshna Sukdushi Duke Shu Sama Sangha Vidarjita Tulya Ninda Sutir Moni Santushto Yena Kenachit Ani Keta Stira Matir Bhaktiman Me Prionara Synonyms Sama equal Satro to an enemy Cha also Mitre to a friend Cha also Tata So Mana in honor Apai Maniyo and dishonor, Sita, in cold, Ushna, heat, Shuka, happiness, Dukeshu, and distress, Sama, equipoised, Sangha, Vivarjata, free from all association, Tulia, equal, Ninda, in defamation, Stuti, and repute, Moni, silent, Santushta, satisfied, Yena, Kenachit, with anything, Aniketa, having no residence, Stira, fixed, Mati, determination, Bhaktiman, Engaged in devotion, may to me, Priya, dear Nara, a man. See, Krishna here is talking to Arjuna about what is, what the qualities are in his devotee that he finds attractive and that he's pleased with. So, Mike, go ahead and read the translation, or Eric, I mean. Uh, one who is equal, 
I'm sorry, yeah, I wanted to make sure I wasn't muted there. Uh, one who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equiposed in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge and who is engaged in devotional service. Such a person is very dear to me. Okay, go ahead, Melissa. A devotee is always free from all bad association. Sometimes one is praised and sometimes one is defamed. That is the nature of human society. But a devotee is always transcendental to artificial fame and infamy, distress and happiness. He is very patient. He does not speak of anything but the topics about Krishna. Therefore, he is ca called silent. Silent does not mean that one should not speak. Silent means that one should not speak nonsense. One should speak only of essentials. And the most essential speech for the devotee is to speak for the sake of the Supreme Lord. A devotee is happy in all, all conditions. Sometimes he may be very palatable, uh, may get very palatable foodstuffs, sometimes not, but he is satisfied. Nor does he care for any residential facility. He may sometimes live underneath a tree. He may sometimes live. I lost my spot. Oh, he may sometimes live in a very palatial building. He is attracted to neither. He is called fixed because he is fixed in his determination and knowledge. We may find some repetition in the descriptions of the qualifications of a devotee, but this is just to emphasize the fact that a devotee must acquire all of these uh, qualifications. Without good qualifications, one cannot be a pure devotee. Harav Abhaktasya Kuto Mahad Guna. One who is not a devotee has no good qualifications. One who wants to be recognized as a devotee should develop the good qualifications. The, of course, he does not extraneously endeavor to acquire these qualifications, but engagement in Krishna consciousness and devotional service automatically helps him develop them. And we're going to talk about what those are, right? They're coming up next. The qualifications of a devotee? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Krishna is talking about what pleases him and what pleases him is a devotee qualification. So these are actually, he's already discussing these uh, in these series of verses. But um, I was just going to ask you, what what verse are you doing tomorrow? Um, the one about how like the soul can't be moistened. It can't. Yeah, moistened by wa water, <laughs> withered by the wind dried up burned or fried or something like that <laughs> yeah you can't do anything to yeah, it yeah yeah it's like it's a, a super it's like a superhero you can't you can't kill a superhero you know no matter how many bullets you shoot at it he's like you know the uh it's that's you know christian is the ultimate superhero it, you know because you know, you always see these movies and, you know, the, 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 the bad guys got like unlimited automatic weapons and somehow or other, the, the hero never gets shot and he imagines, <laughs> manage, manages to kill all the other guys and he's the only one left standing. I mean, that's like, that's because like the Bhagavad the Gita. Script. It's like a Bhagavad Gita because, you know, the only people that, that survived the, the entire battle of Kurukshetra, millions of soldiers, was Arjuna and the five Pandavas. And none of the, none of the rest of them survived. Of course, that was Krishna's plan. But I mean, you know, why why talk about all these other things when you can talk about you know what is real adventure? You know, if you read the Mahabharat with the Bhagavad Gita is inside the Mahabharat, it has everything. It has uh, you know, it has uh, uh, fighting. It has romance. You know, Krishna like you know kidnaps is his girlfriend, when she asked him, she had never met him. And he, he, she, he wanted, you know, his, her, he usually has a, have arranged marriages in India and she wanted to marry him because she just heard about him. And she, he thought, oh, she thought to herself, I, I want him. There's, there's nobody else I would be satisfied. Even if it takes many lifetimes, I'm going to marry him, you know? And so, 
you know, he, it was okay with her father, but her brother was envious of Krishna. So she, he wanted her to marry this other guy, which who was totally envious of Krishna, and she didn't like that. And so he wrote her a letter. And so Krishna like uh, got the letter, and in and uh, she figured out a way that she could, he could kidnap her. That's called a Rakshasha wedding. They used to like kidnap the bride. Uh, you know it either you know willingly or unwillingly and then automatically you're you're the husband or the wife of the person that you, is kidnaps you that's on called the a wedding day? what's would that they kidnap her would the kidnapper on the wedding day well they kidnapped her uh, i think it was like right before the wedding day or maybe it was on the wedding day i'm not sure i can't remember but see when the the tradition is that when when uh the bride goes to the the temple of uh i think durga and on the way there, you know, like she was walking very slowly and she was looking for Krishna because this Brahmana had, she'd sent the message and she didn't know if he was going to come. But uh, the Brahmana, you know, and then uh, she was looking around and she was so beautiful that like all the other warriors were like looking on their horses and, and uh, they all wanted her because she was just so gorgeous. And in fact, she was so beautiful that they were falling off their horses because they were so struck with their beauty, you know? <laughs> and and so, you know, and then she like felt a little twitching in her left eye or something, it's supposed to be an auspicious sign. And then she saw Krishna. And so Krishna very slowly, very calmly rode his chariot up, put her on the chariot and drove away. Just like a, a, a lion carries, a, you know, a, a lamb out of the, away from the jackals, you know. So and uh, and that's the way he did it, just like nonchalantly, like any other, you know, superhero. But and then they lived happily ever after. That was her, his principal queen, Rukmini, in Dwarka. But you know, there's there's stuff like that. It's like totally romantic. You know, there's all these kind of things that are very interesting to people. So why not talk about that instead of like. You know, like this devotee was saying, you know, from New York, saying all the young people that go to the New York temple and uh, at the Bhakti Center, they're asking him questions about the trial between, um, uh, what's his name? Um, who played Johnny the Depp and the Amber Heard? Yeah, I mean, everybody's talking about that. And I said, why do you talk about that? I mean, that's just such a train wreck. <laughs> I mean, talk about Krishna. Krishna is so much more interesting. Everybody's finding all the way other things to talk about, you know, the sports stars, you know, and like the movie stars and the, and the rock stars, you know, Krishna's the biggest one of everything. He had 16,108 wives. How many wives can you have? You know, I can't even take care of myself hardly, you know, <laughs> Krishna can, Krishna can take, uh, can take care of uh, unlimited wives. Hold on a second. I got to turn my speaker on. I mean, that's just that's we do got to talk about Krishna and not uh, other people because he's most interesting, and, and that's just my humble opinion. And other people agree. Um, I'm going to check my speaker. It just went off. Okay, it's on the real tech. Okay, I'll, I'll just use the computer speaker. Somehow my, my Bose speaker goes out. Anyway, um, I guess I'll read the next verse here. I'm getting off on a track, but, uh, you know, Krishna's very interesting. In fact, you know, if you hear about Johnny Depp and whatever her name is, Amber Hearst, you'll just get tired of it after a while. They did it. They did it like a, I heard that if, if they might, present a ruling and it, people all the the judge will be so sick of those two <laughs> after a while that they won't award anybody any money because it's just a train wreck you know i mean what's what's so interesting about that just because they're celebrities you know uh then everybody's interested you know but the you know there's no attraction for a devotee i don't even want to try to dovetail it you know uh like you know you're supposed to you know krishna Prabhupada could talk about anything and turn it into a krishna conscious conversation but Maybe I'm just an old curmudgeon, but I just don't even want to talk about like sports <laughs> figures or rock stars or, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in the Kardashians. I don't want to know about it. You know, they're famous for doing nothing. That's all I know. But uh, anyway, I'd rather talk about Krishna. So that's why we're here. Uh, text 20. 
yetu dharmatmritam ridam yato kritam parupasate shradhana mat parama bhaktas te tiva me priya synonyms yea those who to but a dharma of religion amritam nectar idam this yata as uktam said paripasate completely engage shradhanas na with faith mat parama taking me the supreme lord as everything bhakta devotees te they ativa very very may to me priya dear eric why don't you read the translate or uh, the translation those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith, making me the supreme goal, are very, very dear to me. Okay, Melissa? Okay. In this chapter, from verse 2 through the end, from me avesha mayo yemam, fixing the mind on me, through ye to dharmam ratam idam this religion of eternal engagement the supreme lord has explained the process of transcendental service for appreciating him such processes are very dear to the lord and he accepts a person engaged in them the question of who is better one who is in, uh, the question of who is better one who is engaged in the path of impersonal brahman or one who is engaged in the personal service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead was raised by Arjuna, and the Lord replied to him so explicitly that there is no doubt that devotional service to the Personality of Godhead is the best of all processes of spiritual realization. In other words, in this chapter, it is decided that through good association, one develops attachment for pure devotional service and therefore accepts a bona fide spiritual master from him, begins to hear and chant and observe and the regulative principles of devotional service with faith, attachment, and devotion, and thus becomes engaged in transcendental service of the Lord. The path is recommended in this chapter. Therefore, there is no doubt that devotional service is the only absolute path of self-realization. For the attainment of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the impersonal conception the impersonal conception of the supreme absolute truth as described in this chapter is recommended only up to the time one surrenders himself for self-realization in other words as long as one does not have the chance to associate with a pure devotee the impersonal conception may be beneficial in the impersonal conception of the absolute truth one works without fruitive results meditates and cultivates knowledge to understand spirit and matter uh, this necessary this is necessarily as sorry this is necessary as long as one is not in the association of a pure devotee fortunately if one develops directly a desire to engage in krishna consciousness in pure devotional service he does not need to undergo step-by-step -step improvements in spiritual realization Devotional service, as described in the middle six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, is more congenial. One need not bother about materials to keep body and soul together because by the grace of the Lord, everything is carried out automatically. Hey, Benjamin, can you unmute yourself and say hello? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, thanks for joining. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, absolutely. Good, good. I'm a little yeah, late. I've got Eric. Eric is here too, and uh, Melissa. Okay, so, awesome. Hey guys. Hey. That's the end of the uh, the twelfth chapter. You know, he's talking about uh, the path of devotional service here at the end, uh, with being better than the path of impersonal realization. You know, at the beginning of this chapter, he said, you know, like. Uh, the impersonal path is very difficult because you have to conceptualize the you have to understand the the non conceptual feelings <laughs> and i don't even know what that means you know how can you understand how can you meditate on something that's impersonal it just doesn't make sense but somehow or other if you study like that for millions of births and you know fix your mind and try to engage in you know, uh, welfare activities for humans, uh, 
then maybe you can understand a little bit. But then uh, ultimately, you still have to come to Krishna and surrender it to him and engage in his service. So why not cut to the chase? You know, it's like, why take the stairs at the Empire State Building when you can take an elevator? You know, so that's the process. We've got about, uh, let's see, maybe 15 minutes left. So let's go ahead and uh, do the 13th chapter. Nature, the enjoyer, and consciousness. Text one and two. Arjuna vacha prakritim purusham chai vacha chetram chetra gyanam gyam evacha itad viditam ichami gyanam jnayam chakeshava sri bhagavan vacha idam saridam konteya chetram iti abidiyate etad yo viditam pur prahu chetra gya iti tad vida. Synonyms. Arjuna vacha. Arjuna said, Prikatum, nature, Prusham, the enjoyer, Cha also, Eva, certainly, Chetram, the field, Chetra Gyam, the knower of the field, Eva, certainly, Cha also, Etat, all this, Veditum, to understand, Ichami, I wish, Gyanam, knowledge, Nayam, the object of knowledge, Cha also, Keshva, O Krishna, Sri Bhagavan of Acha, the, the personality of Godhead said, Idam, this, Sharidam, body, Kontea, O son of Kunti, Chetram, the field, Iti, thus, Abhidiyate is called. Etat, this, Ya, one who Veti knows, Tam, he, Prahu, is called Chetra Gna, the knower of the field. Iti, thus, Tat, Vida, by those who know this. Melissa, why don't you read this and I'll give a chance for um, Eric to read the purport. Okay. Arjuna said, Oh, my dear Krishna, I wish to know about Praktri, Purusa, and the field and the knower of the field, and of knowledge and the object of knowledge. The Supreme Personality of God had said, This body, O son of Kunti, is called the field, and one who knows his, this body is called the knower of the field. Okay, uh, Eric, you can read the first paragraph. Sure. <clears throat> Purport. Arjuna was inquisitive about uh, Praktri, nature, Parusa, the enjoyer, uh, Kestra, the field, Kestra Jna, its knower, and knowledge and the object of knowledge. When he inquired about all these, Krishna said that this body is called the field and that the one who knows this body is called the knower of the field. This body is the field of activity for condi the conditioned soul. The conditioned soul is trapped in material existence and he attempts to lord it over material nature. And so according to his capacity to dominate material nature, he gets a field of activity. That field of activity is the body. And what is the body? The body is made of senses. The conditioned soul wants to enjoy sense gratification and according to his capacity to enjoy sense gratification, he is offered a body or a field of activity. Therefore, the body is called kestra, or the field of activity for the conditioned soul. Now, the person who should not identify himself with the body is called kestra jna. Am I saying that right, jna? It's actually um, chetra, chetra, it, it, the... Um... It's kind of like slightly pronounced. The K is slightly pronounced, but it S with a dot under is is S H. So it's Chetra, Chetra. Okay. And Gna, Gna means knower. So that's Got correct. It. Chetra Gna, the knower of the field. And it is not very difficult to understand the difference between the field and its knower, the body and the knower of the body. Any person can consider that from childhood to old age, he undergoes many changes of body and yet is still one person remaining. Thus, there is a difference between the knower of the field and the activities and the actual field of activities. A living conditioned soul can thus understand that he is different, uh, that he is different, uh, sorry, let's, let's, uh, from the body. It is described in the beginning Dehino Samin, that 
the living entity is within the body and that the body is changing from childhood to boyhood, from boyhood to youth and from youth to old age. And the person who owns the body knows that the body is changing. The owner is distinctly Kshetrajena. Uh, sometimes we think I am happy, I am a man, I am a woman, I am a dog, I am a cat. These are the bodily designations of the knower, but the knower is different from the body. Although we may use many articles, our clothes, etc., we know that we are different from the things used. Similarly, we also understand by little contemplation that we are different from the body. I or you or anyone else who owns the body is called Kshetrajna, the knower of the field of activities. The body is called Kshetra, the field of activities itself. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, um, this is, it, it's interesting because um, when you said uh, the, the material, uh, the conditioned soul entrapped in material existence, he attempts to lord it over material nature. And th th that kind of struck me as very profound, you know, because that's the reason we're here in this material world. We want to be the Lord. <laughs> And uh, we try to lure it over material resources and try to accumulate it as if it is ours. But when actually nothing belongs to us and nothing is ours and this whole world is the property of Krishna. And if we think we can use it for our own sense of gratification, then we become thieves. Just like, you know, a person who builds a house, you know, you provide all the materials and then he builds a house and then he says, well, okay, this is mine now. No, it's not yours. It's my house. I paid for all the materials. I'm just employing you. I'm paying you to build it, but it's not your house. It's, it's uh, Krishna's house. And similarly, even this body is not even ours. This body is an instrument to be used for Krishna's service. And the senses, I mean, he was talking about the senses, uh, the senses are actually controlled by Krishna. Krishna is called Rishikesh, which is the controller of the senses. So when we use the body senses, uh, instead of serving our own senses or serving for our own temporary pleasure, we try to serve Krishna's senses. That's the whole point of the Bhagavad Gita. And then it just kind of turns everything around. You, you, you think, you know, I was kind of like wandering around New Vrindavan at one point when I became a devotee at first. And I thought, wait a minute, maybe, you know, it blew my mind because I was thinking, I always thought my whole life that I was the center of everything. And then I realized actually Krishna is the center of everything. And it kind of like was an epiphany, you know, I said, everything I know is wrong, you know, <laughs> and it's just like the other side of a mirror, you know? So if you, if you do that and serve Krishna instead of yourself, then uh, that's perfect. It's Krishna consciousness. Let me just read this last paragraph here. In the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the knower of the body, the living entity, and the position by which he can understand the Supreme Lord are described. In the middle six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the relationship between the individual soul and the super soul in regard to devotional service are described. The superior position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the subordinate position of the individual soul are definitely defined in these chapters. Living entities are subordinate under all circumstances, but in their forgetfulness, they are suffering. When enlightened by pious activities, they approach the Supreme Lord in different capacities, as the distressed, those in want of money, the inquisitive, and those in search of knowledge. That is also described. Now, starting with the 13th chapter, how the living entity comes in contact with material nature and how he's delivered by the Supreme Lord through the different methods of fruit of activities, cultivation of knowledge, and the discharge of devotional service are explained. Although the living entity is completely different from the material body, he somehow becomes related. This is also explained. So it's like from time immemorial, you know, we're all originally Krishna conscious entities, but because of our association with matter since time immemorial, we become forgetful of who Krishna is. And so we have to uncover our innate Krishna consciousness. It's not something that's external from us. We are actually originally Krishna conscious, and we all have an eternal relationship with Krishna, but it's just a matter of awakening by purifying our heart. Then we can um, understand that Krishna is in our heart, and he's in the heart of everyone else as well. 
I'll just read the Sanskrit of this one real quick. We've got about, let's see how much time we have left, about a little over five minutes. So, Chetra Gyam Chapi Mam Vidhi Sarva Chetri Subharata Chetra Chetra Gnayar Gyanam Yet Taj Gyanam Matam Mama Synonyms Chetra Gyam, the knower of the field, Cha also Api certainly Mam Mi Vidhi knows Sarva all Chetreshu in bodily fields, Bharata, O son of Bharat, Chetra, the field of the activities, the body, Chetra Gnayo. And the knower of the field, Gyanam, knowledge of yat, that which taught that, Gyanam, knowledge, matam, opinion, mama, my. Go ahead, Melissa. O oh, scion of Bharata, you should understand that I am also the knower uh, in all bodies. And to understand this body and its knower is called knowledge. That is my opinion. Okay, we'll take turns. Eric, go ahead. Report. <clears throat> While discussing the subject of the body of the knower and the knower of the body, the soul and the super soul, we shall find three different topics of study, the Lord, the living entity, and matter. In every field of activities, in every body, there are two souls, the individual soul and the super soul. Because the super soul is the plenary exp expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Krishna says, I am the knower, but I am not the individual knower of the body. I am the super knower. I am present in every body as the paramatma or the super soul. Yeah, that's one thing that blew, blows my mind. You know, we all know only our own body. I can't know what, even though I'm looking at you now, Eric, I can't know what's going on in your body. You might be experiencing, you know, intense pain, but I don't know that. But Krishna knows everyone. He's in everyone's heart. He knows what everybody's doing all over the universe at all times, past, present, and future. So that is the super knower. One who studies the subject matter of the field of activity and the knower of the field very minutely in terms of this Bhagavad Gita can attain to knowledge. Go ahead, Melissa. Okay, the Lord says, I am the knower of the field of activities in every individual body. The individual may be the knower of his own body, but he is not in knowledge of other bodies. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is present as the super soul in all bodies, knows everything about all bodies. He knows all the different bodies of all the various species of life. A citizen may know everything about his patch of land, but the king knows not only his palace, but all the properties possessed by the individual citizens. Similarly, one may be the proprietor of the body individually, but the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of all bodies. The king is the original proprietor of the kingdom, and the citizen is the secondary proprietor. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is the supreme proprietor of all bodies. That reminds me of, uh, <clears throat> like in New Vrindavan, they have, they have video cameras, you know, to see if there's any nefarious activities. But on the road, there's posted, it says, it has a picture of a camera and right above it, it says, Krishna is watching. Yeah. <laughs> and so, the, you know, they may think, you know, somebody that says that, it's like kind of cute, but he actually he is. He, he doesn't need any video camera. He's notching, watching everybody at all times and all places simultaneously. So, uh, Eric, why don't you read up to the Sanskrit? I'll read the Sanskrit and then Melissa can read the rest of it. I've only got, like, can, we've got less than one minute, well, less than two minutes left here. The, the body consists of the senses. The Supreme Lord is Harishka, which means the controller of the senses. He is the original controller of the senses, just as the king is the original controller of all activities of the state. The citizens are secondary controllers. The Lord says, I am also the knower. This means that he is the super knower. The individual soul only knows his particular body. In the Vedic literature, it is stated as follows. Actually, we'll just have to end it here. Does anybody have any questions about this part? Uh, especially, you know, those, the last part of the, ch the chapter or the beginning part of this chapter? We've only covered two verses. But we'll pick up on this, this uh, the middle of this one. So we have less than one minute left if you want to ask any questions real quick. I think I'm all right. Okay, well, thank you for joining. 
I Thank appreciate you, Vashik. We, I, I love to talk about Krishna because there's so many things to talk about. Nobody talks about Krishna. I get frustrated, you know, when I'm watching TV, watch the pundits on there, you know, my watch them arguing and, and then uh, I'll, I'll complain to my wife, why don't they talk about Krishna? And she'll just start laughing at me. You know, <laughs> of course, they're not going to talk about Krishna. So uh, anyway, I will uh, hopefully see all you guys uh, on Friday. So thank you very much for joining. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Chick. Hare Krishna, Krishna, Benjamin. Thanks for Hare hopping Krishna. on. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Take care, everybody.